Okay. So the topics we're covering include the fly bar apparatus, the Drosophila Activity Monitoring System, also known as DAM for the future of this presentation, and Excel's role in this entire project, some fly background, a cover a little bit of alcohol sensitivity, as well as what rapid tolerance is, and we're going to finish off covering the correlation analysis in this project. So I wanted to go over what the fly bar exactly is. So we, it's called an apparatus. I The one we used in lab felt homebrew, but it's basically an air pump, air pump that's from fish tank connected to tubes, connected to an air regulator, flow meters. Ours was set to two parts ethanol, one part water, which meant 1,000 milliliters per minute of ethanol, 500 milliliters per minute of water which were in these respective flasks, the bubblers. Uh, the air pump was connected to tubes in the mixing flasks that would then bubble the, com the chemicals, send it into a mixing flask, which would then all send it to administration chambers here. So the way uh, we would do it was we would expose the flies to vaporized alcohol since they don't do well with surface tension. And here's a video of them within the exposure chambers. The focus right now is just a fly that's stuck. Later, we'll see some that have succumbed to the ethanol. But in the meantime, we'll be covering the dam system. So the dam system is composed of at least 10 of these monitors. Each monitor holds 32 tubes, and each tube can hold, uh, each tube holds a single fly with food and cotton to allow a little bit of air circulation. And it's held in a monitor in an incubator set to a 12 hour day night cycle for at least three days. Uh, our experiment we used four so we can cut off one day. And the red line you see here is an IR light. Every time the fly crosses this light, it's counted in the system as a tick. And that goes on for the entire duration of the data collection process. And then it's saved into a computer and the computer runs Windows XP as well, because it will not turn back when it gets shut down. And then here, once we collected the data, we put it into a soft, an open source software developed by Carol Chichewicz and Jay Hertz called Shiny R Dam. With this uh, software, we are capable of processing our raw data within hours instead of doing it by hand, which would take weeks. And it also gives us the opportunity to customize every single option, giving us uh, data such as daily uh, sleep motor activities, uh, circadian rhythms, sleep profiles, activity profiles as well as well as lets us develop graphs and everything. Uh, we didn't use this software to make our graphs since it was really finicky in that aspect. And as far as Excel goes, these are some of the functions we use in Excel. Mean, standard error, students t-test, and correlation analysis. In the students t-test, we did a two-tailed, one-type t-test since we were comparing homogeneous uh, data that were similar to each other. Um, and we did standard error of the mean since that allowed us to see the variance in our averages of each replicate. And then finally, the correlation analysis, which we did on the dam assay results and fly bar apparatus results. So we had three aims for this experiment. We wanted to test uh, the fly lines that had staple short or long sleep for the alcohol tolerance and alcohol sensitivity. And on top of that, uh, we wanted to test them for their appropriate behavior. Additionally, we wanted to find a correlation between those sleep behaviors as well as sensitivity and tolerance. So our purpose of the experiment was to see the effects of sleep length on the development of a form of alcohol tolerance known as rapid tolerance, which led us to this question, does sleep affect rapid tolerance in just a whole lab And now you might be asking, why should we care? 
this is why. A previous study showed uh, flies would decrease sleep. They were mechanically induced. They would be shaken throughout a 24-hour period, uh, had increased alcohol sensitivity as well as increased alcohol toxicity, meaning they would be killed easier by alcohol and flies that would be long sleep that would be pharmacologically induced. They would be less sensitive to alcohol and were more tolerant as well as a result. In a different study that showed the opposite result, uh, it was done on mice that showed that lack of sleep also mechanically induced, but this time they were on a treadmill. Um, they showed lower alcohol sensitivity. And then finally, as to the whole big picture why, alcohol use is detrimental to health and can cause tolerance, which then eventually lead to alcohol abuse and other health complications, as we all know. And now, so a little bit of flyback. So the flies we used were from a sleep inbred panel, they, which is a collection of inbred flies that have extreme long and extreme short sleep durations. And extreme long sleep can mean at least 12 hours. Extreme short sleep can mean just over an hour. And by sleep inbred, that means they were bred for 13 generations and artificially selected by each metric. And why did we use flies? Well, they're ideal to genetically trace target genes because they're fully sequenced. On top of that, uh, these fly lines are at extremes of the trait of interest, which is sleep. And there have been previous studies done which analyze sleep differences in circadian rhythms and their effect on longevity on these same flies. On top of that, I wanted to include a graph, uh, a picture that shows uh, the, the comparison between mammals and uh, flies. So there are three types of rapid tolerance called acute, rapid, or three types of tolerance, acute, rapid, and chronic. Acute being thir uh, 15 to 30 minutes after initial exposure. Uh, rapid tolerance being four hours flies after initial exposure, 24 hours of mammals, and then chronic, which is 24 hours after uh, intermittent or continuous exposure. So we use the four hour metric because that was a lot easier to work with in the lab and a lot easier to work with here. And here we have the experimental design for the fly bar essay, which was uh, we took two to five day old male flies then exposed them to alcohol, each exposure chamber holding 30 flies and then the number of flies that lost their writing reflex was uh, writing reflex was documented every five minutes, 40 minutes. You, right now you might be asking, what is the writing reflex? We'll see in the next slide. And then once half the flies were down, we called that T half in each vial. And then we let them have four hour recovery time and did the same protocol again to see any difference in T half. Because in the in this graphic here, we see that first exposure to have, and then four hours later, the second exposure. And then from there, rapid tolerance is the difference between our final and initial exposure. And for convenience for the rest of the presentation, uh, I included a graphic that has all of our uh, genotypes that we use. DGRP, our control being in black, our short sleep flies being in orange for the rest of the presentation, as well as long sleep being in green. And here, here is a video showing, or well, at least a picture showing that some of the flies that lost their writing reflex, they're on their side. Here, here, here. It's just, they're just on their side. This one's standing upright. And how it was, it's kind of, subjective almost and yeah it, it's hard to see how long it takes because all this count different you'll tap the tube and some of them stand up immediately so we have to wait at least five seconds to include it as a one count and after the dam assay so we performed this one after collecting data for the lorr and rapid tolerance assays and we did note that our control DGRP had 
uh, lower rapid tolerance than what we were expecting, despite it having to serve as the median or the middle band and or middle row. And we just wanted to make sure nothing was wrong with our control. So we troubleshot it. And by doing that, we had to expose it to a, very, a variety of different exposure times from 20, 30, 40, and 50, because rapid tolerance follows a logarithmic trend. And if the further we go out, it ends up plateauing. So we wanted to ensure that the flies were either exposed to enough alcohol or ensure that we weren't just ruining the data by exposing them to too much. And then finally, we collected the locomotor activity, circadian rhythms, um, using the Dan assay just to make sure all of our genomes were behaving as expected. And then in the Dan assay, there's 32 flies in each monitor, the same genotype, all male, and then monitors were left to report for four days and we cut off at the starting at, we cut off anything before 6 a.m. for the first day to have three full days of data. And then that's when we plugged it into Shiny Garden. And here's some of the results we saw. So as right now, you can, you're probably thinking, what does this all mean? I'll tell you. So the loss of writing reflex, we did notice that there was a variance in uh, loss of writing with all the sleep genotypes. What we did know was S21 and L22 weren't statistically different than our control. Additionally, this kind of translates over to rapid tolerance where L11 and L12 aren't statistically different than our control as well. But we also noticed that Despite being our control, it's nowhere in the middle on either side of rapid tolerance or less writing. So that's when troubleshooting comes in. So we saw that it does follow a logarithmic trend, but the problem with that was our testing uh, condition was the lowest. And we saw that 30 minutes was still significantly higher, and we saw the plus. <laughs> We saw the plateau much too soon, but we did come to the conclusion that there's still significant noise as we didn't have enough replicates. This is preliminary data as well, and that there still is no clear distinction as to whether long sleep has higher sensitivity or short sleep does across the board for both the uh, conditions. Additionally, DAM assay results uh, show uh, this probably looks like a nightmare to you. It always does. But the one thing I like pointing out is that this graph is an inverse of this one, because in this one, we look at the average sleep activity. And this one, we look at the average activity profiles in the flies. So activity means when they're awake, and then this one's self-explanatory. So from there, we're wondering, what part makes our flies behavior normal. And then we saw that in our sleep profiles that all the short sleep flies were under the control here in black. And all our long sleep flies were above our control in green. And then at that point, we were able to make the conclusion that nighttime sleep, as uh, this is an entire 12 hour cycle, the from zero to 12 hours, it is uh, daytime or when the lights are on. And then from 12 to 24, that's when the lights are all off. And we can see that the trend follows similar in the activity profiles, where short sleep shows the most activity and long sleep shows the least activity, with DGRP, our control, being in the middle. So we could conclude that activity is normal and the behavior we saw was expected. On top of that, we were also able to get other results like sleep out number, daytime, sleep out length, and nighttime sleep. And again, we can see that in daytime, in these three graphs, there is no clear distinction. It's a bit clearer in uh, sleep out length where DGRP is in the middle and short sleep and long sleep are around that same area, but there was still 
some that weren't statistically different than our control. And that's when we saw that nighttime sleep data was in fact more, uh, more of the reason to characterize these sleep invert panel flies as their respective characteristics. So then finally, we get to the correlation analysis. I'm showing you all a lot of graphs, but it's purposeful. So overall, we see negative correlations, but on top of that, we still, we still have a lot of outliers in each of our graphs, namely in rapid tolerance and loss of writing. So we did a correlation analysis to see if our if the processes of sleep and alcohol sensitivity and tolerance are controlled by the same regions of the brain. We then came to the conclusion that we couldn't use this one since the correlation was too weak by a zero point uh, negative zero point zero seven five bar coefficient, and then the same could could be said by this one, it's much stronger negative correlation, which still supports the idea that they are controlled by different regions. This one does as well as it's much closer to negative 0 0.5. And some, the weird one though, was the rapid tolerance versus sleep out number, since this is the only positive correlation we have, which throws, uh, in a way, throws a wrench in the idea that they're controlled by different regions. But also, we can see that there's still significant noise in this graph. But the one we did see a uh, kind of clear uh, correlation was in rapid tolerance and nighttime sleep, where the co coefficient factor was larger than zero, negative 0 0.5. And the line was semi pure. We did still see some outliers, but increasing replicate numbers will increase the power in our statistics. But, but they're they're really low mm -hmm. uh, correlations, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. It's hard to say they're correlations. Yeah. Because they're so low. Exactly. Yeah, they're not near seven or anything. Mm -hmm. so. so that brings us to focusing on our rapid tolerance and nighttime sleep, so our metric for the blocks, where we do see a moderate correlation. Mm -hmm. So this brought us to the conclusion that the correlation showed that processes could potentially be controlled by different regions of the brain, but the there is still uh, some power lacking in statistics. And so the conclusion, we wanted to answer these four questions. Was there an effect? Yes, we saw variance in rabbit tolerance and loss of writing. And, but we weren't able to specifically make the judgment on which one had a better effect or which one was the one we wanted to pay attention to, which leads us to what did we see as a result? Variance in the data all across the board. And then what did we do uh, as a result of this variance? Well, we did troubleshooting, we ran a dam analysis to just, just to confirm that our flies were in fact normal and behaving properly. And then were these processes related? Yes and no. We, from preliminary results, we can say yes, but no, because we do not have enough data to be as confident in our data. So then just to recap, we covered fly bar apparatus, dam system, Excel's role, the fly background, some alcohol sensitivity and rapid tolerance and both, as well as the correlation analysis. And now you're wondering what's gonna happen next. So the future directions for this project is 20 more sleep lines remain for testing as well as increasing replicate numbers, which will help in reducing noise. And there's finally a program we're going to use to do a gene association study to be able to map which genes are in charge of not only the sleep, as well as rapid tolerance, and to see if these are the same genes or not. And then here are the references. And are there any questions? I have a question about the, the um, so they're exposed to the alcohol vapor 
uh, you know, how do we know how much there, even though you know how much you're putting in the percentage, but how do we know how much each fly is getting, even though it's one fly? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you measure the amount of vapor loss or anything like that? No, we don't measure it, but we just measure the amount of vapor going. So you're just assuming they're breathing it. Yeah. And but the, you don't know how much. Yeah, we don't know how much. And the only reason we know that they are breathing it is that they lose the right. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to measure them. I mean, is anybody measuring it? I'm just curious. No. But what, you know what ways we can measure it? Mm -hmm. See, to me, that would be very important mm -hmm. as opposed to what, you know, just from human, uh, one beer versus six beers versus 12 be beers, mm -hmm. etc. So even though they're all the same percent of alcohol, but how do we know how much that little booger is breathing right. in? That is a good question. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll make sure to raise that. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Very question. Would you like? Um, would you please provide your name and the name oh, of the institution? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Mary Rachel Parker, University of Houston, downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your questions and participation in this session. In person participant, please use the QR code in your name badge to access the link, evaluate the session before leaving. Please select the correct track and time. So participant, please access the evaluation link in the chat so you can complete the evaluation as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think I've never uh, heard your presentation. Did I go to the SRC last year? Yeah. <laughs> you tried recruiting that one. Okay. <clears throat> the behavior it shows during rapid tolerance is so one we can't figure out yet. Right. Yeah, so we're, we're still working. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>